everyone! Thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be looking at something very exciting, which is our branch statements. For those of you who have been following along throughout this whole series, you're probably really excited because this is actually going to let us implement loops, if statements, function calls, and so much more. This is actually going to allow us to change the flow of the program and move to different spots or locations inside of the program based off of certain conditions. So let's open up our ARM assembly reference and take a look and see how that works. This is going to be our branch instruction, and this is actually going to take as an operand the label describing the location that you're trying to jump to. We've talked about labels before, so let's take a look in CPU later and see what it looks like to actually create our label again. I'm going to add a couple lines down here, and I'm going to say cond1 for condition1. And then we'll do some kind of behavior down here. And then I'm going to do a second condition. And do cond2. This is going to be our second label. So a second location which we can actually branch to. And then I'm going to put a different behavior down here. Let's go back to our reference. This is actually going to be the mnemonic to signify that this is a branch instruction. This is actually going to be an absolute branch and it's not going to require any certain conditions in order to jump to the location specified by the label. But actually what's interesting about this is we have a lot of different letters that we can add to this mnemonic in order to signify what conditions we would like to have before actually doing our branch. Let's take a look right here. These right here are going to describe all of the different conditions that we can possibly do for our branch statement. So if you remember from the previous video, we looked at actually comparing some values and we were able to compare whether they were equal, not equal, one value was greater than or one value was less than, and it set the CPSR register based off of those conditions. Now we're going to actually use those conditions to branch based off of what the result was. So for example, if we have our equal right here, we just add uh -oh. this EQ to our B mnemonic to get BEQ and we'll actually perform the branch if that previous comparison was equal. Let's take a look at some examples and kind of get a better idea of how this works. I'm going to go back to my CPU later and we have our two condition labels and we're going to practice jumping from one condition or the other. So let's set up maybe a couple of values up here. I'm going to do move R0. Let's do maybe four and five again. Four. I'm going to do move R1, the constant value, five. And then let's do our condition one more time, which is going to be our compare. So CMP was the mnemonic for that. And let's compare the values inside of R0 and R1 registers. So let's do CMP, R0, R1, and remember that's subtracting the value inside of R1 from the value that's inside of R0 in order to set the CPSR register accordingly. And then let's actually do our branch statement. So I'm going to say, let's pick one, branch equal maybe. So we'll do BEQ. So we're appending those two characters to our B mnemonic. So branch equal if the last comparison was actually equal. And then let's add our label. So remember we're, we're actually passing the location that we would like to jump to. So that's going to be, let's say condition one. So let me add a few things to condition one and condition two so we can differentiate whether they're executing or not. So I'm gonna say maybe move into R2, the constant one. And then similarly, oops, let me fix my spacing. I'm gonna move into, sorry, R2, not R1. And then let's move into R3 the immediate value two, which stands for condition two, for this condition right here. 
So if you're looking at this, you would expect that if these two values are equal, we're going to jump to this condition one, and then we're not going to execute condition two. But this actually is not the case because if you let, let me just show you real quick. If we compile and load and let's step over, step over, do our comparison, you would expect this to jump to condition one. However, it's just going to keep executing in order of whatever instruction is coming next. So it's actually going to start executing condition one, condition two, and then anything that comes after that, since we haven't actually ex exited the program. So I'll show you. See, we're still executing condition one and condition two. This is probably the worst if statement in the world. So let's see how we can fix that. So we have branch if equal to condition one. What we can do if we want to actually skip this, if they're not equal, we can add a second branch statement that's actually going to jump to condition two. And all we need to do is put that right after this BEQ mnemonic right here. So we can add an absolute branch. So this is going to be branch no matter what. There's no comparison or anything happening to condition two. So if these two numbers here are equal, then we're going to branch and jump over to condition two. So this statement right here is never going to be executed. However, if this is false, then we're not going to jump to condition one. We're actually going to branch directly over to condition two. Let's take a look and see what that looks like when it's running. Let me compile and load once more. And I'm going to reset all my registers just so you can see. So let's do a step over. We're doing our setup. We're comparing the values R0 and R1 again. And now we're going to branch if that previous comparison had two numbers that were actually equal. So they were not equal, so we actually expect not to branch to condition one. So we'll do step over. And we are at branching to condition two now. So we expect to jump over this condition one. And sure enough, here we go. We're actually at this R3 is two. We step over there. We can see that get that value two gets moved into register R3, but the value one actually never gets moved into the register R2. Let's take a look at a couple more examples just to get the idea of this. So I'm actually going to change this instruction from branch equal to maybe branch not equal. So let's see. So instead of doing branch equal, we want to do branch not equal. So that means we need to append N and E instead of E and Q to our B mnemonic. So I'm just going to do instead of EQ, branch not equal. So now, since these two values actually are not equal, we do expect to jump over to this condition one. Let me compile and load and show that. And I'll clear out all my registers once more. So step over, step over, do our comparison. And now branch if the previous values in the previous comparison were not equal. So we expect to jump to condition one and actually skip this B right here. So do step over. And sure enough, we are hitting our condition one. So the immediate value one is going to be passed into R2. And here you go. Now, the funny thing is, is we've still continued on our sequential execution. So the condition two is also still going to run. And you see, we get the value two in our register R3. But this means that we'd actually have to add some additional branching inside of our program in order to make some instructions that actually make sense. But I'm not going to bother with that since I'm just trying to show you how these branching instructions actually work and function. Let me show just a few more things that we can do with these branching. So you remember our condition flags on the right hand side is it's actually going to show 
all of the different con condition flags that need to be set in order for these comparisons to actually return true. So if you remember, our CMP instruction was subtracting the two values and setting the zero flag inside of the CPSR register. So if that Z flag is set to true, then this branch equal statement is actually going to be true and it is going to jump to the label specified and passed to that branching statement. Similar goes for our not equal instruction. Let me find a couple more really common branching instructions to take a look at. So let me just scroll down. Let's do our less than. So this is gonna be true if our value was actually less than the other value. Let's try this. So remember we have our LT to add to our mnemonic. I'm gonna change this branch not equal to branch less than. So if R0 is less than one, then we are going to take this jump and I'll just demonstrate this real quick. Let me reset these. And then we'll step over, step over. We've already got that set up. Compare R0 and R1. Branch, if R0 is less than R1, then we're gonna jump over to condition one. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. And I think that looks good. Let me see if we have more that we want to show, but hopefully you're getting the picture at this point and it's not too complicated. Greater than, let me show this one as well. So branch less than, now I'm gonna do branch greater than. So we're gonna expect to hit condition two instead since R0 is not greater than R1. So we're gonna take the second condition right there so let's compile and load. Step over, step over, do our comparison. Branch if R0 is greater than R1, that's false. So we're actually gonna take this secondary branch right here and jump to condition two. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. And we get R2 in our register R3. Final thing I want to go over is if you're doing the B mnemonic, you could also do BAL like this, which is basically just the unconditional jump. So it's not checking for any particular comparisons before jumping, it's just jumping no matter what. But more commonly, I'll see it like this syntax just with the B, but it could also look like this and this actually just means the same thing. But if you are reverse engineering and you're throwing something in Ghidra, for example, it just does this B as far as I've seen. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, I showed you how we could do branching statements to jump to particular labels or areas in memory based off of certain conditions. So this is really useful if you're trying to do if statements, loop statements, or even function calls. And in the next videos, we'll start looking at how we can do some of these specific if statements or loops in C and what they would actually look like in assembly so you can get a better idea of exactly how this works. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. I think I'm still too small. Oh, I can definitely eat this one.